Hello, and thank you for joining us today. My name is Jordan Wood, and I am Custom Programs Director for SAI based here in Rome, Italy. Today, we're going to look, be talking about faculty-led programs and how faculty leaders can take advantage of unique opportunities for teaching their curriculum abroad. And we know that studying abroad exposes students to different cultures and really challenges them to step out outside of their comfort zones. Uh, this results in greater global engagement and cultural competence. And faculty-led programs allow faculty-led leaders to uh, take students outside of the classroom to engage with a new community and help them connect with course content in new and meaningful ways. So at the end of our presentation today, we will have time for some Q&A. So we encourage you to submit any questions or comments you may have using the Q&A feature. As you can see here on the screen, we're excited to have some wonderful colleagues with us today who have worked with SAI for many years. Uh, they are going to share their experiences and their insight into faculty-led program development and implementation. So with that, I am going to turn it over to Dr. Edna Wilson, SAI's Vice President of Academic Affairs, who works closely with faculty on the planning stages of custom program process. Thank you, Jordan, uh, and welcome everyone. And I wanna say a special thank you to our faculty presenters who took time away from their busy schedules to, uh, to join us today for this, uh, this webinar. Um, you may already be familiar with SAI. Some of you might still be calling us SAI. And, and a year ago, we made the transition to SAI, which is actually the way in which it's pronounced in, in Europe. So it's cut down a bit on the confusion for our students at least. Uh, and we've been around since 1995. We have a really strong history in Italy in particular and have branched out into Paris and into Barcelona. What's really exciting about working with SAI is because we are small and focused, we really have been able to gain a deeper knowledge of these areas. And even if you decide that you wanna work in Barcelona, we certainly have expanded that to areas in Madrid and throughout various regions. And the same with Paris. We've worked with a number of faculty to plan programs beyond Paris as well. But this at least gives you a look at where we're located. And uh, you know, I, I think it really has helped us around our, um, our expertise to be able to focus in on these, uh, these locations here. So um, we're gonna move to the next slide and you'll see here that one, as we talk about the, the expertise uh, that we've developed, these are some of the key areas that, that we really work with you on to, to make sure that, that you, you know, you're gonna come to us with your goals and objectives, but we often help to refine those goals and objectives and so forth. And we really have been able to develop resources for just a, wide range of disciplines. And what's really been exciting for us is there may be a particular activity that we have, perhaps in food and culture that can be applied to many different disciplines. And that's kind of exciting for us when we see it applying to food science or applying to language and history, things like that. So just um, you know, take a look at the screen here and see what are the key areas that we uh, we cover. And I think now more than ever, ones that have to do with logistical support and management and health and safety have really become important to our schools. And you know, we really have that expertise not only to help you in planning your program, but to handle any level of crisis management that that occurs. And this really has been more experience that we've gained during our time when we really uh, you know, brought our programs back as early as fall 20. So this is also more knowledge that then passes on, um, passes on to you. Uh, and I think again, as I mentioned with, with the idea of expanding learning activities to many different uh, uh, of our programs, there's a number that we really do. Like, like we've been able to put ones together and food and animal science in, in Southern Italy, engineering and the arts, fashion design in, in Paris, luxury management in, uh, in Milan, 
and comparative education, which we've done in uh, most of our locations as well. So I think, you know, again, taking one example of a learning activity that we've been able to apply to a variety of areas, uh, we've done that in with global health and pharmaceutical science there as well. So I think if you have an area and you're thinking, oh, this is something that really won't work abroad, please reach out to us because we really have developed a lot of experience in, in how to work with faculty in, in developing that. So on the next slide, we're gonna talk a little bit about, again, what are these targeted learning experiences? What are, what are the different areas that we can build in for you? And we um, are there to work with you around certain areas to focus in on your curriculum, the academic focus. Sometimes faculty um, want to have that knowledge that they can gain abroad from others. And they, they often ask us to help them find experts in particular topics. And we spend a lot of time and how do we you know, research that? And, and with the cultural expertise, and here's again, some of these different areas with this focus on the culture. And I think the strength for us is that we do use our own staff and all of the planning and research, and it really helps to be able to develop that knowledge that we can apply throughout the continuum of topics that come our way. We don't really go out and just consult with someone or subcontract with someone. And then that's knowledge that's lost. This is really knowledge that we've gained throughout our years of working with faculty on these types of programs. And I, you know, my role is really one as academic liaison here in the, in the U.S. And it's really just to kind of get the conversations going. It's really the strength is really in working with our team abroad because they really have that firsthand knowledge and can work with you in many different areas related to cultural content, academic content, and so forth. So with that, I'm going to turn it back over to Jordan, who's going to describe some of that consultation that we do. Thank you, Edna. So at SCI, we always begin the process of program development, like Edna mentioned, by consulting directly with faculty on the academic content. We consult to understand how best to structure a program that, first of all, meets the academic and learning goals, and then is logistically uh, manageable. And finally, it's affordable. It has to fall within your desired price range. Our dedicated local experts are skilled in researching trends and current issues to inform faculty of the many, many opportunities that are available here on site. And because our programs are designed in country, we have a multitude of uh, local contacts that are able to provide recommendations and further enhance programs. We utilize our extensive in-country contacts to identify guest lectures, for example, industry visits, uh, specialty itinerary activities that really align with and complement the academic content. And all of this is based on our detailed discussions during the initial consultation phase. So we start every program looking at the goals and the learning objectives, and then working our way to identify what interactive experiences can we build into the program that will really help faculty achieve those goals. And due to our longstanding relationships with local organizations and all of our locations, we're able to arrange some really exciting behind the scenes opportunities. And the real strength of SAI is our local cultural ex expertise uh, that we use from the very beginning. So to further explain this, I'd like to ask our custom programs manager, Marco Minuti, uh, to talk a little bit about this process and how he goes about developing programs on site. So thanks, Jordan. Uh, we believe that designing and that executing a successful program really starts with the faculty's vision. So we want to understand the student and faculty needs so that we can provide resources and access to local networks uh, to design unique learning experiences. So we are always looking to create experiences outside of the classroom that students cannot find anywhere else. At the same time, we want uh, all the experience that we build into the program to really connect with what is being told inside of the classroom. So we are always looking to see how we may be able to complement and elevate the academic content through experiential learning activities and visits. So I can do some example uh, for an engineering course, as you can see from the picture on the slide, uh, we organize a, 
bicycle production facility visit and the attendance to the Italian cycling competition. For a criminology program, we organized the visit at the RIS, RIS, the Forensic Scientific Laboratory of the Italian Police. Uh, for an agriculture and sustainability program, we organized a pig farm visit and a visit to a local production of cold cats. For a business program, we organized the, the visit to the port of Genoa. And for example, the last example that I can bring is for a pharmaceutical program, we, we do a mix of underneath cultural activities and guest lecture by Italian Pharmaceutical Association and also an hospital visit, hospital visit. So we spend a lot of time researching these activities because we want them to be specific for students and create lasting memories. Great, thanks Marco. Can you also talk briefly about size student focused approach and how uh, we integrate services into each program? Sure. So we prepare students and faculty prior to their arrival through custom pre-departure guides and pre-departure orientation sessions. Upon arrival, we greet the students at the airport and we welcome them with a nice traditional meal. And during the program, we accompany groups to their appointment. And during the regular business hours in all of our location, we are available to assist students with any question or needs. Student health, safety, and well-being are really at the core of all of our services. So in addition to the program content development, we also offer emergency management support on site so that faculty leaders can focus on teaching connecting with their students. We have extensive crisis management procedures that are in place for each of our location, and our staff are trained in handling student emergency. This way, we can assist in dealing with any issue that arise so that the faculty can concentrate on the academics and on making connections with and among the students. Excellent. Thank you, Marco. So now we're going to highlight a couple programs that we have collaborated on more in depth. At this time, I'd like to ask one of our faculty members, Professor Laura Luters from LIM College, to share a bit about her program development. Laura, Hi. can you briefly describe your Renaissance art program in Florence? Uh, we've been running this for several years with you. Can you just go over how that came about and how Sai was able to support you in the planning process? Yes, absolutely. So thank you for having me here today to talk about probably my favorite thing about my job, which is bringing students to Florence every summer. Um, I've been doing it since the, our first trip ran in 2016, but we started planning. It was either it was late 2014 when uh, the college brought the idea to me and then 2015 that we really started planning it. Um, so it's been what is that at least eight years or something like that. Um, as the name suggests, Rebirth and Revolution, the Arts in Florence, like our program is really focused around um, the art and uh, culture in Florence. Of course, the Renaissance being the most famous, but um, we, you know, we include uh, some contemporary things, food, some fashion, um, some hands-on um, workshops, as you can see in the slides here. Uh, it's six credits in three weeks. We run it in the summer. Uh, we started initially having a section in either May or June. And then um, since the last few years, we've built up to running two sections back to back. Um, so we do a May and a June section. Like I said, it's three weeks. Students get six liberal arts credits within three weeks, which is, you know, I think really amazing for them to not only have the experience, but earn academic credit. Excellent. And Laurel, can you just briefly describe the hybrid model uh, that you use with your program and why that has been successful for you? Yes, of course. Uh, so, so here by um, hybrid, what is meant is that part of the program is taught with me, the faculty leader, and then part of it is um, through one of the partner schools um, that Sai uses, um, which is Florence University of the Arts. Um, also, in addition to Sai being amazing, they, you know, they've been an amazing collaborative partner as well. Um, so students um, in the mornings, Monday through Friday, they choose one course at FUA. Um, and our students tend to, you know, they tend to, to take art and cultural courses for the most part. So things like 
food and culture in Italy or beginning Italian language. Um, we, we have some hands-on courses for those that want to get a visual studies credit instead of liberal arts. So things like plein air painting or sketching, uh, photography. Um, so they have a choice of all these really, I'd say mostly really fun classes in the morning. Um, there are some more academic ones like marketing or the, sometimes we have some very business focused students at the college, so some up for that. So they have that in the morning. And I'd say one really advantage of it is that they, they get to be exposed to other international students. So it's not like they're not staying isolated just within the group. And I'd all, they also really get the experience of going to an, a European university, which is obviously different than the experience at an American one. So it's for like a, an immersive and like a global exchange, it works really great. But then in the afternoon, they all take the same class with me. Um, so that's a three credit liberal arts class. Um, that's the one, the rebirth and revolution. So it really, it focuses on painting, sculpture and architecture and the Renaissance. But again, like we really branched it out because um, there, there's so many wonderful things like the paper marbling hands-on workshop you can see in the photo here. And that's nice because then the group is together. So we're a small group. We usually have um, eight, to eight or 10 students and it's just the one faculty member me. So then the group is all together. And so it's a, I think it's a really um, nice, balance between, like I said, having their group together and then having these, you know, other um, more immersive uh, experiences. Excellent. And I, I love that that paper marbling activity. And, and you know, I, I love always seeing those photos when we when we get them at the end of the course, because it just looks like the students are getting so much out of that interactive experience right there. Yeah, they love it. That one, it's almost like magic, you know, how you make something, yeah. something from nothing. And the students really love it. And, um, you know, that's one of the things that, like, I, I thought, like, I was one that came into knowing exactly what I wanted to do, or so I thought. And then, um, you know, Sai just brought all these other things I didn't even really know existed, like, and paper marbling is one of them. So that's been such a wonderful addition for me to learn about and for the students. And yeah, they love it. Excellent. So just one final question for you, Laurel. Um, do you have any advice or recommendations or considerations to give for faculty that may be looking to run a hybrid program at one of our partner schools? Uh, uh, yes. So I mean, I guess the first thing I would say is definitely like you, Sai, like we've had such a good experience. Like I would not want to do it without a provider. Um, at our college, we have all different kinds of study abroad programs and some don't use providers. And I have to say, usually they end up being a disaster for one reason or another. Um, in one of the slides, I think Marco had mentioned that you, with when you use Sci, that you can really focus on the academics and the connection with the students and not all the other things. And like things do happen because like that's the way the world is. And, and so having that 24 seven, um, uh, emergency services and just like having the on the ground support. So like, I would just say, you know, using a provider and I don't think all providers are equal and like, and you know, so I really, um, you know, I wouldn't be doing this if I didn't really have had and continue to have a great experience. And, you know, I really think that uh, Sai is a wonderful partner. So, I mean, that would be my first advice is just don't do it alone. Um, the second one would be to plan ahead. Um, but that being said, be flexible and adaptive because things change. And like we all went through COVID. And so, I mean, I, how many times did we change? And we, you know, ha, like one really has to be prepared to change and pivot and to just build that into the learning experience with the students that one of the one of the reasons that you do study abroad is for growth and learning to, to pivot and be adaptable and like in different cultures, like I always tell them, you know, we're from New York, like Italy's much slower than New York, but embrace, don't see that as a flaw, embrace that. So like, I think I'd say another advice is setting your students up for expectations, but then at the same time, telling them that having an element of surprise is one of the wonderful things that, um, and that's really where there's a lot of growth and uh, learning. Um, and then the last thing, like this probably seems really stupid, but the first time I did this, I hadn't met the students, 
until because we you know we have they're across departments and we have different buildings and even though we're a small college I hadn't met my students and so I met them the first time at the welcome lunch and that was such a bad idea do not do that like if you are going to do this even if it's over zoom get the group together ahead of time so they have a rapport with you and so you're not like just first meeting because they'll feel so much more comfortable and that was a huge mistake I made the first time that after the second time I didn't do that anymore so I'd say definitely meet in person or over Zoom to just, you know, like so that they know you and they feel comfortable and they know each other a little bit. And um, so, so that would be my last thing that it's just something I never would have thought of until I did it. Great. That is really, those are really great um, tips and advice. So thank you so much, Laurel. Of course. So I'd also like to ask Dr. Jeffrey Lally to talk about his experience. Jeff, uh, we've also run uh, programs with you for several years. Can you give a brief review or overview of your tourism management program that you've run in Italy? Sure, I, I, absolutely. And before I start that, I just wanted to pick up on what Laurel said about working with the provider. Um, and I'll talk more about that as I go through my own program. But Sai has been a great partner. And uh, in addition to my role as a professor in the School of Business, I also took on a role in 2020 as faculty co-director of global engagement initiatives at the university, where I work very closely with our Center for Civic and Global Engagement. And we have you know, been making a lot of changes in terms of how we uh, execute global engagement, faculty-led, study abroad, et cetera, at Widener. And one of the things is that we have moved to really uh, requiring a faculty to use a, a third party provider because of some of the challenges that everyone experienced out of COVID. And just what you mentioned, Laurel, is that we want a faculty to focus on the pedagogy of the class, the mechanics of the class, not all the logistics on ground that SI helps you take care of when you're there. So just wanted to kind of add that up front. So basically, I'm a tourism and hospitality individual. That's my background, that's where I came from. Widener had a, for a long time a tourism and hospitality management program, but as things change, uh, in the world and academia, it's kind of shifted to sport and event management. But but I met Edna back, I think 2014, 2015 at an educators conference. And we started talking about Sai. and every year she would say, when are you ready to start? When are you ready to start? And we kept talking and talking. And finally in 2017, I was able to develop a, cor a course called International Tourism Management. And that began the process of working with Sai. And fortunately, Edna it happens to be close to my university. So I'm able to talk to her very easily. She can come in and talk to my students as well. And so I developed this course. Um, and actually, uh, I also had a recommendation from a colleague, Dr. Donna Albena, who uh, has run a program for many years, even longer than I have with Sai. And so basically, we started building the program kind of from the ground up. And you know, I knew I didn't want to do this alone. And so the, the great thing is I got involved early on at the beginning with Sai, So basically, I started working with you, Jordan, and we talked about what my course learning outcomes were, what I wanted to accomplish. And it was kind of broad because tourism is broad. And I mean, and, and we wanted to have that students have that experiential global experience. And so I kind of really truly partnered with Sai to kind of build the agenda that we did in Italy the first time to complement the course learning outcomes, to complement this knowledge, skills, and abilities I wanted students to get at the end of the course. And so and it was broad, everything from tourism to working with DMO officials. And I wanted students to be able to, to learn about those things in another country and kind of compare them to what, we're, what we do here in the United States. And so, and the great thing about it is, was that it was, there were specific elements that I wanted, but we made it broad enough that actually my first time I ran this course, I had two communication studies students take the course and loved it. And said, so, you know, there were elements of communication that, I may not even thought of when we were playing this that they got out of the course. So really, you can have engineering students, you, you know, when we talk about architects, there's so many things when you're traveling abroad and doing these programs that students, maybe not even your own major can be a part of and get an experience out of this. So at the end of the day, we did a really kind of balanced approach that allows students to compare and contrast domestic international tourism generators, tourism operations, destination development, management, tourism marketing, social media, the sociocultural aspect, environmental, uh, uh, excuse me, the environmental impacts on tourism and the like in Italy. And so it allowed us students to really kind of look at the culture, the people, the customs, the infrastructure, the government and the economy and how 
tourism works in Italy versus in the United States. Um, and basically it allowed me also to build a lot of my coursework, my projects, my lectures around that upfront because the way I work it is we do it over spring break. And so the first eight weeks is kind of a lot of, a lot of theory, um, but it allows me to get students prepared uh, you know, basically having someone come in from our languages department to give them a little bit of Italian, for example, so they have some understanding of the language. And then when you get on site, it's amazing. I worked with Marco last time in 2019, and I you truly feel like you have an on-ground partner, like he's the co-professor of that course. He was there every step of the way. If I had any questions, he walked us from the hotel to the train station. I mean, I never felt alone. I never had to worry about anything. You know, if I had any issues or concerns with any of the providers like hotels or whatever, he was there to kind of intervene. So I could really focus on the relationships with my students, seeing what they were seeing, um, really getting them to, it was like kind of like, you know, a parent who sees their children grow up, but like seeing these students have these wow transformation experiences and it allows you to focus on that, you know, more than all the other logistical stuff. And so basically that's kind of how we developed um, that particular program, Jordan. Great. And Jeff, uh, after running your program twice in 2017 and 2019 in Italy, you're now switching gears and you're going to be offering it next year in Barcelona. And you're also expanding it to include sports management as well. So I wanted to get some more uh, information from you, how that came about and how you've been able to really adapt your program to this new location. Sure, absolutely. So as I mentioned, the, the majors kind of evolved and I knew I wanted to continue this course, but I knew it had to change. And so before I started rewriting the course, and I'm still working on it, that will run next spring, the first person I called was Jordan at Sai, And we started talking actually during the pandemic. We thought we were going to be able to run it a little bit earlier, but we weren't ready to, to have students travel abroad. Fortunately, we are now. And so we started talking about what my goals were in this course, how I wanted to alter it, that I wanted to keep some of the tourism components and elements that I had already developed and, and worked with in Italy and kind of built on that success, but then add in the sports tourism piece. And, you know, Jordan's like Barcelona is the best place to do that because, I mean, sports tourism is a huge economic generator for that city and for Spain. And so basically we started building a program based on my uh, outcomes, what I wanted the students to be exposed to. So we kind of took some elements that also worked, kind of adapted them to Spain, but we took out things that may not be relevant anymore. For like, for example, in Italy, we did, uh, I think it was called the Gallery Art Hotel that we went to, right? Because lodging was part of what I wanted to talk about before. Well, that's not necessarily what I want to talk about now. So we added in the Olympic Stadium and other sports elements that are important to Barcelona. So we've kind of took some things, kept them, but kind of moved into to Barcelona, so to speak, from Italy, same with the same concepts, but we also added the, the pieces that are gonna be important as I teach this course in a different way um, to different students with, who have different interests. Again, I, I can't stress enough, Sai listens, and that's important. You wanna provide it listens. They, talk, they listen to what you wanna do, and they'll even make recommendations. Did you think about this? Or how about doing that? That I may not have thought of that will work with what I'm trying to get the students to, to get at the end of the course. Great, thank you. And just one final question for you, Jeff. Do you have any recommendations or considerations for faculty, especially faculty that may have already run a program like you did, and now they're looking to maybe uh, change locations, visit a new city, or add in a different academic component? I think uh, early on, like I did with you, Jordan, start, start the conversation about, you know, and you said, well, what do you want to do? What do you hope to get out of this? How is this going to change? And so have those conversations. And this is really, you know, something that takes time. And, and I know I'm sure Laurel can relate. We put a lot of work and effort and time and energy into developing these programs. And it's something that takes years. And so I really just, I didn't want to reinvent the wheel and, and Jordan knew that, but we wanted to build on the success we had in Italy, but, but in a way that worked for this new setting, this new course. And so, you know, and we required at Widener to have things submitted a year in advance. So I started working on this literally in 2020, 2021, and we had an agenda already out. It's been out now for about eight months. And of course, we'll continue to refine that as you move forward um, until we get to next spring. But my recommendations is, 
you know, um, and I know that Edna is great about um, connecting with other faculty that have done programs similar that you can talk to and get recommendations from. That's what she did when she connected with, I mean, I know Donna, but she connected with Donna to kind of get some feedback from her, what worked, you know, because every time you run a program, and again, Laura, I'm sure you'll uh, understand this, you run it the first time and say, oh, we need to do this differently next time. And you're constantly, every time you're changing, evolving, based on student feedback, based on what you see, what worked, what maybe didn't work. Uh, maybe, you know, I, one of the things I was told is give them a day of downtime. They need some downtime, right? So I work that into every program that I do because they get overwhelmed a little bit. But basically at the end of the day, it's, it's start early, get them involved up front and make them truly your partner to help you plan, right? Because then it kind of builds itself as you plan the agenda and you can work the, the course learning outcomes and the pedagogy around that. So they kind of truly are, you know, hand in hand in tandem. They're succinct when you finish your course. Excellent, thank you so much. So as you've seen, we work very, very closely with faculty. You've heard some of the ways here which, in which faculty have designed, designed their program with SAI. Each program, of course, is unique and characterized by tailored program features. Um, some of which you see here on the screen. Um, and, you know, all programs at the same time can take advantage of educational strategies that really incorporate targeted learning experiences uh, across the curriculum. And here you can see the overview of our program development process. So after the initial consultations, uh, we work with faculty on the program itinerary and the details and the specifics of the day-to-day -day itinerary. And then once the itinerary has been finalized, we can assist with recruitment in initiatives, uh, participating in study abroad fairs, holding virtual info sessions for students and their family, and even creating digital flyers. And then once the program is confirmed, we provide students and faculty with an array of pre-departure materials. And we also do an online virtual pre-departure orientation. And then of course we run the program with you. And after the program has completed, we meet again with faculty to evaluate and review the program. And like we, Jeff was mentioning before, we you know, already right from the end of a program, we start looking at how can we make it better in the future and what can we do better and what maybe didn't work so great and what we definitely wanna keep in for future programs. So if you are interested in getting started on a program of your own, uh, you can contact us directly or fill out our program interest form on our website. The QR code here on the screen can take you directly to our website where you can find additional information about our services. You can also email us directly at facultyled at sideprograms.com 